Strictly Business today, Zambia's death situation. How deep are the ripple effects? OS Ray Mwape says the movie industry could be the answer to Zambia's employment problem. And we get to the Bank of Zambia governor who says that the central bank to remain independent. This is Strictly Business. My name is Judy Ngulube. Now, this past week has had Zambia's uh, date repayment situation on everyone's lips. Everyone has been talking about it. ZNBC's Sander interview spoke to Finance Minister Dr. Walyangandu, who elaborated a number of issues. Firstly, uh, the, the debt stock, the external debt stock, stands at 11.97. So I think it's correct, as you say, 12 billion. We can run it off to 12 billion. Now, sometimes you see a number like 14 billion reported. That uh, includes the debt stock itself and the guarantees. Some loans are guaranteed by the Treasury. Uh, in some calculations, we include that because it's a contingent liability, whereas it's not exactly uh, a debt until we are called upon to pay it, but sometimes it's necessary to consider it. So that's when you see that elevated number. What it's showing is just the, the difference between the, the actual debt stock itself and the uh, guarantees. Now, there was the, the famous 27, 27 billion. billion. Now, the World Bank produces a report where they, they look at the, t the, the various aspects of external debt that is owed by different countries. And um, they, in so doing, they disaggregate um, Sovereign debt, that is the debt that is owed by government or the treasury, that's sovereign debt, from private debt. Uh, sector debt. Uh, if you read the report produced by the World Bank, what you would have seen is actually the total number of 27 billion, but that is amalgamation of uh, uh, sovereign debt as well as private sector debt owed in foreign currency by companies operating in this country. That includes the debt owed by mining companies, by the banking system, and so on. So that's where that 27 billion debt came from. Come from. Uh, it's up until now, it's only the Chinese Development Bank that has agreed. The others we're still discussing. We are in this process of discussion. And the reason we haven't made much traction is that everybody was waiting to see what we do with the bondholders. They were sitting there waiting. This is an opportunity for you to show to us that you're serious about what you're saying, which is that there are serious uh, fiscal constraints which require a period of debt service standstill so that you can then organize yourselves. If you're serious, then you need to show that in your actions. We also had various reactions to this statement. One of these reactions was uh, made by Mutusunge Zulu of the Economics Association of Zambia. Mutusunge appeared on TV One's late night show, After Nine, with Brian Mulamba, and this is what his reaction was all about. So let me, it's a good question that you ask. Let me explain to you where the pain is coming from. When you borrow, they say it's good to borrow for capital expenditure. Yep. It's not just roads. Mm. It's bridges. Very soon, the Kazungula Bridge is going to be commissioned. If you've been to Kazungula, you notice that before the bridge, they were using a pontoon. And a pontoon is a slow uh, piece of equipment. Three trucks at a go. So that's why you'd find trucks are queuing up. What does that do? It slows trade. Mm. So the pain is coming from you borrow, you invest, but then ideally your investment is supposed to be self-sustaining. So imagine I, 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 I borrow, I, I, I buy an asset, and then I start generating cash, and then that cash is then used to service the debt. So the pain point now is that we went, Zambia went and invested in infrastructure, but the infrastructure has not yet started to generate any revenues. For example, your airports not complete so you're not getting the benefit but you need to service that debt so that money is technically coming from projects that are not related to the capital expenditure mm -hmm. but in the future you will get economic benefits it's a lesson that has been learned by Zambia as well because 
it speaks to the level of accountability as well because what so now we have heard from dr Walyangandu. we've also talked to um ESZ through uh, mutisunge now let us get the development end of things the perspective of the effects specifically on commerce trade and industry I'm excited because Phil Daka, the newly appointed CEO of Zaki, is with me to chat on this one and really just get the repo effect of what this is going to do to commerce, to industry. Mm -hmm. Firstly, congratulations. Thank you so much, Judy. And uh, I'm already in the deep end, yeah? You just, you have to hit the ground running, isn't I it? I have to hit the ground running, yes. <laughs> okay. Yeah. Um, we, we start off our chat on this one. Um, you've heard what the two speakers have to say mm -hmm. and when it comes to issues of uh, commerce and industry really the ripple effects are immense mm -hmm. but how would Zambia's uh, current debt situation affect trade in general firstly? Um, first of all I would love to say you know um, in totality Zambia's um, uh, balance of trade is defined um, by its exports and uh, um, minus the imports and uh, there are certain factors that have really uh, yeah, influenced uh, international trade negatively. Um, and speaking about how the debt situation obviously is standing uh, in, in, in relation with trade, um, uh, we've seen reduction in productivity, um, we've seen um, um, somewhat some obscurity in trade policies, mm -hmm. um, we've seen um, um, the wrestling in, in the exchange rates, you've seen how the quacha is performing as related to, to certain foreign currencies, and uh, we've seen a shake in uh, foreign reserves. Um, um, so uh, I think the, the current debt um, uh, situation needs uh, a concentrated, uh, sorry, uh, uh, concentrated efforts in terms of trying to bring out certain pro pro policies and certain pronouncements that aligns to the current situation as well as uh, going forward. But um, speaking of the debt, there's so many things that are different players like ourselves, the Chamber of Commerce, uh, certain financial institutions, uh, our policy makers and policy advocating institutions ought to be doing, but the onus or the backstops with um, uh, the central bank. There's quite a lot of things that the central bank needs to be doing in, 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 in tandem, of course, with, 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 with players like ourselves. So these are some of the things that you see the Chamber of Commerce is trying to advocate and bring out for the business community there. Mm. So we're collecting quite a number of um, uh, our strategies, different uh, our views in how we are going to mitigate that. So there are certain bottlenecks that, I've really, really, uh, that I can really underpin on and that has been caused by the debt the current debt standing itself and these are some of the things we'll be talking about as we go along in the program okay yeah. now I, I know for the for, for, for Zaki the issue <coughs> of um, it, it's anchored on you know uh, private sector you're interested in the private sector yeah. you have declared that mm -hmm. and what is their feeling when it comes to issues of uh, foreign direct investments with our current status because I mean there's all these names that are being thrown around because mm -hmm. of um, what were labeled as a country currently because of the debt situation um, I would I wouldn't say we our focus is uh, something that uh, gravitates towards the private sector yes we do quite a lot in the private state uh, sorry our uh, spectrum mm -hmm. but we also act as a conduit between the public which is the government and the private sector so we like a double-edged sword mm. so on the private sector side of things is advocacy and on the private side of things is whispering things that we will develop, promote, and support anything that uh, uh, is centered around um, productive economic activities. Mm. Yeah, so this one alone is something that we are just going to fold arms and, and look the other side. It's something that member, uh, uh, members of the exchange, mm -hmm. um, uh, everyone commerce around the country has come to us and say, what next? There's so many things that we are doing. We know much of these things are owed to the fact that um, uh, the economy world over has been hit by the morbid uh, uh, virus COVID-19. COVID 
and um, um, that, that, that alone has say certain things that we are doing to mitigate. So very soon you'll be hearing from us, we're talking about the post-COVID-19 sort of strategies in terms of commerce and trade in the country. Mm -hmm. Now getting back to, uh, to, to, to the business, getting back to what we are discussing today. Um, look, you've seen it in the media. Just today there's something that uh, uh, was published by the Central Bank yes. where we're talking about a lot of adjustments in terms of uh, uh, policy monetary rates and this and that. Now um, uh, that, that is causing a lot of um, uncertainty to some mm -hmm. extent. Uh, in the business community and uh, what we're trying to do is um, this debt thing that is here now I think it's high time that we really spoke to IMF nicely that's my thinking <laughs> and that's some I'm echoing certain words that are coming from uh, obviously the people that are uh, part members of, of, of the chamber this is the time we spoke to IMS sorry IMF for uh, balance of payment support no, there's something that we can go there and bring out. Now, this, 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 this includes both um, um, uh, the current account mm -hmm. as well as the capital account. So IMF has got uh, a certain command power when it comes to uh, stabilizing a few things here and there. Now, um, um, not really overstepping boundaries, but sticking to, to the mandate that uh, uh, mm -hmm. the, the, the chamber is all about. Um, we are in between. They say when the elephant is when the elephant when two elephants are fighting what suffers is the grass is the grass you know, so we Talk, you should, talking about the grass suffering mm -hmm. i mean for, for you it's it, it's commerce yeah. and it's trade yeah. and definitely these two are going to be affected mm -hmm. and when these two are affected we can't run away money markets will be touched on exactly we've had so many figures flying around to say the quarter is going to reach this length mm -hmm. this height mm -hmm. this you know when mm -hmm. it comes to in relation with other foreign convertibles. Yes. So for you as Zaki, uh, a proactive approach or reactive approach? Um, both, proactive approach. Reactive approach, you know, it, it, it is suggestional and um, with, with a certain, obviously, uh, situation that you are hit with, but ours is a proactive approach because we're looking at something that spells out a win-win on both sides. So proactive approach. Proactive. Yeah. So we will definitely continue to talk about this. This is an ongoing conversation. It's something that, uh, you know, stakeholders like yourselves and other entities will keep on uh, informing us on to see how we can just keep afloat as a country. Exactly. Yeah. Thank appreciate you. I appreciate you coming through. Thank you so much. All right. Thank you. All right. I have been talking to the Chief Executive Officer of Zaki, Phil Daka, on issues pertaining to Zambia's debt situation in relation to commerce and industry. <laughs> Uh, I'm asking this question, is the customer always right? Okay, thank you so much for the question. It's important, is the customer always right? I like this one as someone who is passionate about excellent service, passionate about customer service, passionate about customer experience i like this myth for me it is a fact actually this phrase has been in existence for more than a hundred years and the first person who coined it is called harry, harry gordon selfridge yes harry gordon selfridge he had a, a departmental store which is a supermarket in the in today's uh, uh commerce and trade so he coined this important phrase the customer is always right because of two reasons number one he wanted to convince customers that they'll get excellent service at a particular business so the number two reason he wanted to convince the members of staff these people that attend to customers that they need to offer a very good service Sarova says that the tourism sector has helped their hotel during COVID-19. Sarova Hotel General Manager Ranjish PK says that the initiatives that have been put in place are going to be a permanent feature for them. He goes on to also say that the hotel understands the importance of the green business, making sure that they embrace what is given in the environment to take care of it. And they also have a number of green qualities in their products and services.
to tell you about what measures we have taken uh, to improve our services during the COVID, one, I would like to thank the tourism department because they were very involved in the operations and all those things. So they've given us a lot of strategies and what to do and what not to do. Sarovar Hotels being a bigger brand in India and abroad, we had a lot of inputs from other countries as well. So if you have seen the hotel, when you walked into the hotel, you've seen a lot of things that we have started after the COVID started. For example, the fumigation of rooms, the fumigation of public areas, uh, the number of sanitizing stations that we have in the hotel. We have uh, implemented everything that is world class. One we've stuck on to is that uh, our hygiene and sanitation standards are much higher than before. Uh, before the COVID, yes, we did have hygiene and sanitation standards as well, but since the COVID started and how the business started, we have improved in a number of ways in terms of personal hygiene of the staff, the hygiene of the hotel. We are using very expensive chemicals uh, you know, to ensure that uh, the guests stay safe in the hotel. For example, even when a guest checks in, we give a pair of mask sanitizers to them. Policy end, ma'am, uh, we have taken the policies and the mandates given by the, the government very seriously. Uh, it is not that you know the government sends out uh, or, uh, policies and uh, you know some people follow it or not follow it. We have taken it up very seriously, and we want to be the champions on that. The policies helping thus the government, you know, showcasing that yes, the Zambian hotels are not lesser than any other international hotels. On a lighter side, uh, since COVID-19 started, you know, all of us have become good mathematicians. <laughs> <laughs> yes, we have. Yeah. So yes, uh, well, uh, we were always in collaboration with the government. Uh, like the government says that, you know, make Zambia possible, make everything Zambian. So 90% of the products that we use in this hotel is a Zambian product. In agriculture, poultry, whatever it is, we try to source out locally first. If you look at the construction of the building, uh, the, the windows that we have placed, it brings a natural light in during the day. So what happens is the guest does not need to use too much of electricity lighting up his room. And if you look at the lighting also, we have used, the entire hotel is running on LED, uh, LED bulbs. Uh, talking about the heating system in the hotel, the air conditioning system does not run on a chiller plant, it's running on a VRV system where we save a lot of electricity. And also the heating of the water in the hotel is done by heat pumps and not by oil burning uh, uh, generators. And still in our corporate news, Bank of Zambia Governor Christopher Mvunga says that he will not compromise the operations of the central bank for anything as the institution is bigger than any individual. He said this at a press briefing recently, which is his first major appearance since his appointment, uh, which was announced in August. Now, the Bank of Zambia also announced that it is maintaining the lending rate at 8%. Mr. Mvunga took time to also directly address reports that uh, they will be involved in printing more money as the country goes for a general election this coming year, responding that the election event is not a trigger to printing money by the Bank of Zambia. Dr. Mvunga also said that it is nowhere near the Central Bank of Zambia's criteria to do so. He said that the bank's role is to create liquidity to support commerce and trade, and that's it. The latest project is called Girls to Ladies. All right. Uh, motivated by the fact that uh, uh, just through the Great North Academy, we discovered uh, the Great North Academy, uh, what is this, Rehabilitation Center, mm -hmm. hello my, by Mr. Rosia Stwambo. We discovered there were a lot of kids as young as 13 years who are addicted to drugs. And not only drugs of sniffing petrol or probably uh, cigarettes and alcohol, but we are talking the real hard stuff, cocaine, heroin. So it motivated us to write a story uh, with partnership with Ivory Van der Boom based in the Netherlands. So we come up with a project called Girls to Ladies. Now it's a story about uh, drugs in a boarding school. That's where the setup is. And the effects of what this can do to 
these children when they grow up. There's the education part, and then there's, of course, the entertainment part. Uh, this project has been costly, of course. Uh, the mere fact that uh, there was a lot of research that was involved. Now, research also costs money. Uh, there's a component of the the stages of development, pre-production, post-production, the principal uh, um, photography itself, post-production itself, which costed us a lot of money. And then, of course, there's a the marketing and uh, marketing and um, distribution side of things. The film does not only end with Mr. Mwape directing a film, but it also begins to attract certain synergies and certain people from, from outside. And then, of course, when it's out, there's all these line ministries that also get, I mean, that also get involved. So that's exactly where we are. I always love to say this. Film is the only art form that employs all other art forms. Because within film, there's a sound, there's art design, there's the marketing which I've talked about, there's the catering, there's the makeup, there's the fashion. It's all embedded in one thing. So you can never run film without a sort of collaboration. It definitely has to be there. Uh, for certain uh, associate producers, they come in with certain uh, uh, amenities that help to push the film to where it's supposed to to be done. I was laughing when I when I attended the um, the premiere of Black Dollar. Uh, Zach, uh, one of the directors, came to me and said, "I give you guys who make films respect. I didn't know it was so hard, and then there's so much that is needed to be put into these things." I said, "Yeah, that's exactly what it is. From outside, it looks simple, but there is." a lot of uh, synergies that we really put together to just make sure that one film comes out. And I love what is going on. Uh, the last premiere actually was officiated by the Minister of uh, Information and Broadcasting, Madame uh, Dora Celia. And the passion and support she has put into trying to make sure that this works is amazing. Okay, not only that, as we speak, we are still waiting for our film policy to, to, to be ratified in, in Parliament. So it's something that is really, really making us excited. But where we are, it's really moving because you can see that there's a lot of people producing and you can see that government is now beginning to come uh, to, 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 to work with us. Just a few weeks ago, I was giving a talk to the people that have been selected to... To, um, for the youth empowerment. So uh, I was giving a talk on how to create content as a business. So you can see that there's a lot of things that need to be done. Government has already made a step uh, forward. It's up to us to begin to put ourselves together and say, hey, we can do this and we can add to the GDP of this country. Mixon Banda has been in the newspaper industry for 40 years. We catch up with him on our business segment as he tells us how the newspaper industry has evolved for him specifically because people are reading newspapers online. But what is he doing to keep afloat? I think more than 40 years ago. Up to now, uh, business and cargo pants bang on. Snake and a minute, neck and a good dollar. Maybe when I'm working with him, Tavanga would dollar my phone, so Sanga Gulen is great. We could jay that I would take and look to Kalor in Kale. It's very difficult. It's better when Yamuka Chabo or Sia and my paper or Bull of Wisdom. Profit in Libre Profit. Profit in one quarter fifty and better. If you go, it is better because. Iman Hamongani self self employment, so Iman Kalako Bedifa, and a Tamunga Combo, and a Tamunga was men of food. A Usian Jogi Pusens and Campan, Spajaman Kana, Nalamule, your seven years. Easy enough. Toyamba got a figure pano, Nukuyanga, and I wouldn't do him in a figure pano, my customer is our Pesa or Loyai. Eh, got the Finicopera in the time. I think around zero seven, zero six fifty or so. It depends on you can stand you can you can somewhere.
All right, that is a wrap. That there is what winds up our show for today. Join us again next week, Sunday at noon, for more business information. Starting your week on a business note.